right, today we're going to be doing illustrative math, grade five, unit four, lesson two, partial products in diagrams. We're going to interpret diagrams that could help us find the products. Here's our warm up. Which one doesn't belong? Which one doesn't belong? All right, so let's look at A. Oh, let's look at all of them, but let's start with A. I think A doesn't belong because it's the only one that doesn't have a vertical line, right? These have vertical lines, lines going up and down, which help me to understand the problem. This one does not. So I would say it's the only one without that vertical line. Okay, let's see what about B. B, hmm, B doesn't belong because the large number is not on the horizontal side right? The large number is here, whereas all the other large numbers are here. So I could say that that one doesn't belong because the largest number is on the vertical side instead of the horizontal side. What about C? C is the only one with answers. It shows all the partial products and it's not empty inside, so that one's different. And then I could have chosen D as well because D does not have the horizontal line, doesn't it? It's not divided horizontally. So this one's not divided horizontally. This one's not divided vertically. Okay. So let's, we could think about those in a lot of ways. I hope you guys remember these kinds of diagrams from when you were in primary school because we're going to use them a lot today to help us remember how to multiply large numbers. All right, how might diagram C be helpful for calculating the product of 42 times 33? Well, that is a great question. I like it because it shows 30 times 40 is 1,200. Remember, 3 times 4 is 12, and we add those tens. And then I see 3 times 40 is a 12, and we add a 0. And then we use 30 times 2 is 60 and three times two is six. That could help us find the product of 33 times 42 if we added all these numbers together. Okay, made kind of a mess there, but that's how I saw it. Okay, let's move on. It says write the value of each product inside the rectangles. Find the value of 42 times 33. Okay, let's do that. So again, they already showed us, but we can write it again. 3 times 4 is 12, and I have two tens there, so it's going to be 1,200. 10 times 10 is 100, so it's 1,200. Then I could do 3 times 4 again is 12, times 10 is 120. Then I could do 3 times 2 is 6, times 10 is 60. And then 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, so it says I have to find the value of 42 times 33, so I could do that pretty easily by adding all these numbers together. So I know this is going to be 66, okay, 66, and I know this is going to be 0 plus 0 is 0, 2 plus 0 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, and a 1, right? So if I didn't, I couldn't do it right here because I didn't write it right on top of each other and don't have much room. I could also go over here, make sure I check my work. Yes, zero, two, three, and one. Now I'm gonna add the, the answer to of this, the sum of this to the sum of this. Six, eight, three, and one. So this product would be 1,386. All right, this diagram represents 33, 33, and 142, 142. Write the value of each product inside the rectangles. So 3 times 1 is 3, right? And then I have 100 here, so that's going to be 300, but I have a, hundred, a 10 there, so it's going to be 3,000. Then I have 3 times 100 is 300. Then I have 3 times 4 is 12, and I have a 10 here and a 10 here. 10 times 10 is 100, so that's going to be 100. Then I have 3 times, we can do this one, 3 times 4 is 12 with a 0. 
right? Because 3 times 4, and then we multiply that times a 10. Then we have 30 times 2 will be 60, and 3 times 2 is 6. So I already know that the sum of all four of these numbers, because that's exactly the same thing I did up there, is going to be 1,386. So now all I have to do is add this. Well, 3,000 plus 300 is going to be 3,300. So now I can add those together really quickly and get 4,686. So the product or the value of one, uh, the product, 142 times 33 will be 4,686. Right. Let's move on to see what we're going to do next. Okay, how did I find the value of 42 times 33? Well, I broke it up, didn't I? Oops, we did an array. And I broke it up. 40. Well, do you want to write the 40? I guess, I think, I think they wrote it the other way, right? So they wrote 30 and 3. So they 30 and 3, and then they wrote 40 and 2, that way. And we multiplied, and we knew that this was 1,200, and this was 120, and this was 60, and this was 6, because we multiplied across like that. There we go. So they broke up the 40 and the 2, just like I did across the top, and they broke up the 33, just like I did across the side. How does this diagram represent this equation? Well, the 30 plus the 3 are here, and the 40 plus the 2 are right there. How do you know this equation is true? How do I know that's true? Well, 40 plus 2 times 30 plus 3 is the same thing as saying 40 times 30 plus 2 times 30. So let's look at that. Let me get a different color here. 40 times 30, that's here, right? Here, plus 2 times 30, that's here. And we did that. And that was 1,200 plus 60. And then we did 40 times 3, right, which is 120, plus 2 times 3, which was 6. So how do we know this equation is true? Because we used all of the partial products to be able to decide those answers. Okay. All right, here are some different diagrams that represent 315 times 24. For each diagram, write a multiplication expression inside each rectangle to represent the product. So they don't want us to solve it. They want us to write how we would solve it, right? So here I would do 300 times 20. Do you all see that? For this one, I would do 10 times 20. And for this one, I would do 5 times 20. Down here, I would do 300 times 4. For here, I would do 10 times 4. And then I would do 5 times 4. Okay, for number 2, I would have to do 20 times 315, or 315 times 20, whichever way you wanted to write it. And then I would have to do 315 times 4, or 4 times 315. And then, of course, I have to add all those products together. So I would have to add the answer to this to this. Okay. For this one, I would do 300 times 24. This one, I would do 10 times 24. And this one I would do, I'm going to write 24 on top because it's bigger, times 5. And then I would have to add all of those together. 
Use one of the diagrams to find the value of 315 times 24. Explain why you chose that diagram. So I'm going to go back one slide. Here we go. And I think that my favorite diagram would be number one. So I'm going to choose to use number one because it breaks up all of them and it makes it easier to solve, right? I could do that in my head, right? So for this one, I know that three times two is six and I can add one, two, three zeros. So I know that when I'm done, I'm going to have to add 6,000 to something. So I'm going to write it over here. So this one, I know three times four is 12 and I'm going to add two zeros. So I'm going to put that in my stack and go ahead and add that. So these two are going to be 7,200 or 7,200. I know that 10 times 20 is 20 10 times. So I know that that's going to be 200. I know 10 times four is 40. So this together is going to be 240. I knew five uh, or 25 times is going to be five times two is 10 at a zero. And I know five times four is 20. So I can add 120. So to get the answer to all of it, I'm going to have to add them all together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 7,200, 240, 120, zero, six, Five, seven thousand five hundred and sixty. Seven thousand five hundred and sixty. All right. Well, that was a lot of work to get to that answer, right? But we did get it. Okay. You could have chosen that you liked um, diagram two or diagram three best, but for me, I liked diagram one because it broke up everything. Okay, and so it made it much easier for me to multiply. All right, let's move on. I just explained why I chose that diagram. Okay, 20 times 300, 20 times 300. Let's see what they ask us. How does this expression relate to 315 times 24? Well, that's easy to answer, right? It represents one of the products in the first diagram. Right? In that first diagram, I had um, 20 and 4 here, and I had 300 at the top, and then 10, and then 5. So this represents one of the products that I had to do to find the answer to that problem. Why isn't this expression written in any of the, any of the diagrams? Because we broke them up. They, they're decomposed differently. Right? I decompose the 24 and the 315 for this diagram, and none of the other diagrams decompose them. They decompose them differently. Well, we already talked about which diagram I chose and how it was helpful. What are the advantages and disadvantages of calculating 315 times 24 this way? Well, I think it's simple to calculate if I do break them up, like in diagram 1. Um, if I used one of the other diagrams, the multiplication wouldn't have been such mental math. They would have been harder to, to find the product, right? When I broke up the full product into three, it was good, a good compromise. Like that would be number two, I think. Um, but I really liked breaking them all up. You might like just breaking them up into two instead of three, but there you go. Okay. All right. Today we multiplied numbers and thought about how diagrams can help. How can this diagram help us to find the product of 315 times 24? Well, we've talked about that. Tomorrow we're going to work on more partial products and organize them in a different way. All right. Here's our cool down. So here's a diagram that represents 222 times 14. Find the value of 222 times 14. Use the diagram if it is helpful. Explain or show your reasoning. Okay, so um, they didn't break up the numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break them up. So if I'm going to, I'm going to X this out. Oops, X this out and X this out. And I'm going to put a 10 
and a four here, and I'm going to split. Oops, that was a really bad line. There we go. And then I'm going to split the 222 into 200, 20, and 2. And then I'm going to work the problem, right? 10 times 20, or 2, I'm sorry, 10 times 200. 210 times would be 2,000. 10 times 20 would be 200. And 10 times 2 would be 20. And then 4 times 2 is 800. 4 times 20 is 80, right? 4 times 2 add a 0. And then 4 times 2 is 8. So these are really easy. I can do 28, 280. And remember, I have to add all these together. And 2,800. So now I'm going to take that information. 2,800 plus 280 plus 28. And now I can add all my partial products to get the answer. So 8 plus 0 and 0 is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. 8 plus 2 plus 1 is 11. And that's 3,108. 3,108. All right. I could have also broken it up. Let's go over that really quickly. Let's erase all that. Instead of taking the 14 apart, I could have just taken apart the 222 and left the 14. So let's see how that would look. You might have decided to do that. So this is 200, this is going to be 20, and this is going to be 2. Still going to be easy if I know that two 14s is 28, right? So 14 times 2 is 28. Add the zeros. 14 times 2 is 28 times 10, 280, and 14 times 2 is 28. Then again, I would come down here and add 2,800, 2,800, 280, and 28. And I would still get 3,108. All right. So... If you don't feel like doing both, you don't have to. You can do one because this is pretty simple as well. Okay, I'm going to see you in lesson three. Thank you for watching.